back of the truck special starts out in the garage. I bet you guys know what this is. It's a lathe stand. Uh, made a late night trip to Cincinnati. Bought a lathe stand and a milling machine. I haven't went to get the milling machine yet. I'll show you that when I get back. Uh, I unloaded this before I got the camera out. Let's go to the truck. So here we are in the truck. Back of the truck in fact. And here's the lathe that I picked up last night. Now this is a Craftsman, or I'm sorry, an Atlas QC42. This is exactly the same lathe that I am restoring right now. Um, this lathe has a few little problems, which we'll go over in a future video, but it's essentially in excellent condition. Um, I don't expect that you could ever go buy any lathe and it wouldn't have a wore out gear or a broken little something here or there. That's just part of the experience and you need to be realistic. Um, and it was on that beautiful stand I showed you. Here's the uh, motor drive system for it. Here is a Kennedy toolbox that I got bought. And I'll tell you what I got invested in some of this stuff. This Kennedy toolbox he had a bunch of other stuff in it. The guy was into uh, antique radio repair and things like that. Now look how full this is. I bought all of the contents of a uh, sliding drawer cabinet, which is just loaded, loaded with uh, reams and different things. Um, I got the keys to this toolbox. And you can see all the stuff I got. So this will save me hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I'll go through here and uh, see what I want to keep, see what I want to get rid of. I've got a bunch of uh, keyway cutters here. So some interesting things. Uh, a lot of end mills. Uh, I don't know if any of these are new or not. No, it's another keyway cutter. So I've got a lot of neat things here. Um, bunch of reams. Oh, and some of these reams, by the way, are expandable up here in the top. Um, not sure what you call that, but anyways, got a lot of stuff. whole bunch of center drills, uh, countersinks, just an amazing amount of stuff. Now, I paid $40 for the box with the keys, $60 for all the contents. So I got 100 bucks in that. Don't see how I can go wrong. Now let's go over here to this box. Ooh, we have our ubiquitous Atlas threading chart. Um, nice chuck on a number two taper. Nice chuck on a number two taper. I have oh some gauges, which I didn't have for grinding the carbide bits. This I haven't looked up yet. It's an Arrington uh, from Arrington Mechanical Laboratories. This has a a rubber collet in here. And at first I thought this was some kind of tapping head. Um, here's another another head for it with a larger collet in it. Now I'm not sure. Um, seems to be some engagement and then slip in the middle. I don't know what this is. Oh, look, look, when I turn this, it runs in the opposite direction. So, I don't know. I've got to learn about this. Maybe one of you knows what it is. And come with a tool set, or I've got this tool set, some Jacob wrenches that have this part in it that must go to this, uh, this device, whatever it is. Let me set that aside. I have some other... This, I think, is some kind of tapping head. It's got a uh, some kind of square chuck with a set screw in here. I'm not sure what it is. It says Dorman Machine Tool Works. Also seems to have some kind of gearbox in it. I don't know. I'm going to have to study this and see what it is. It's got a long shaft on it. 
Maybe somebody can tell me what it is. A geometric tapping head. Um, or, 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 or die. A geometric die head. And I, I've seen these used before. It says Style T Modern Tool Works, Rochester, New York. Patent June 7th, 1932. That's just the patent date. Who knows when it was made. Um, but that's very cool. I got a rough looking, the chuck looks good, but this all looks bad. Rough looking tailstock chuck of some kind. So we'll have to figure out what to do with that. Another geometric threading head, or, 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 or die head. This is a little tiny one. That's pretty, pretty cool. This, I'm not sure what this is. This would have obviously went in a tool holder. I guess this doesn't seem substantial enough to hold a boring bar. So I think this may have been a support for something that you put in the tailstock. I don't know. Got a uh, scribing tool, which I didn't have one of those. I still don't have a, uh, a level surface plate. Got another small chuck and key. Got to clean that up. Jacob's chuck. So that's cool. This confuses me. It looks like a knurling tool, but normally there's two wheels on a knurling tool. So I have to figure that out. Chuck key for the lathe. For the forge all chuck. Uh, by the way, I got an 8 inch forge all chuck with lathe. Big monster. I got some uh, number two um, Morse taper uh, drill bits. I don't know if I really want to collect all of these or not. I have a pretty decent selection of drill bits anyways. Drive dogs. Um, what we got here? This is some kind of three jaw chuck. Goes in a tail stock. Can't read what's on it. Didn't bring my glasses out here. There's the ubiquitous uh, lantern tool holder. And got a whole bunch of uh, dies for geometric heads, tapping heads. It's, uh, what is it, 5 16 24, quarter 28, five, six, another 5 16 24. I'll have to sell, I'll sell the duplicates. Another 5 16 24. Yay, another 5 16 24. can't read that one, but I bet it says 5 16 24. 5 16 24. Number 832. Hey, there's a new one. Uh, 5 16 18. Number. Wait a minute. Number 2 by 48. Ooh, that's a pretty, um, pretty tiny one. Number 640. So the ones that I have duplicates of, I'll sell off, and then I'll buy other ones I don't have. Uh, some tool bits. Looks like high-speed steel, and it looks like... It feels too light to be key stock. I don't know what that is. Um, some kind of tool bit. Not sure what that is. There's some nuts and bolts that held the lathe down to the table. Here's the forge all chuck I got. This is an 8 inch and it's a craftsman. So now I have a forge all chuck. These look kind of big on these lathes, but uh, I didn't have a forge all chuck, so now I do. So I'll definitely be keeping that. And the future of this lathe, I'm not completely certain. Um, it's an awful nice condition. I'm, of course, going to favor the one that I'm restoring for myself. But this chuck I can bolt up, or this lathe I can bolt up and start running. Um, and I need, I keep needing a lathe to do various projects. So this will give me a running lathe 
and at some point in the future I'll probably sell it um, but keep the stand that I have. Um, I want at least two good running lathes and I don't need two 10 inch lathes. Now my little, hoard, my little tool hoarding problem, my little tool hoarding life blow up that you're seeing here is uh, I'm up to five lathes now and I haven't shown you all of them but <laughs> it's a problem I'm running out of space um, some of them I'm going to, uh, I bought as projects to repair and sell so that I can earn money to buy other things that I need. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what the future of that is. And this one needs a few things repaired on it too, but it's, boy, it's in awful nice condition. This is one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. And I've got a, I've got a milling machine coming. I've got to go pick it up this morning. Um, and the problem I had was I only took the money to buy the lathe and the tooling the guy had. And um, he had a bench top milling machine there, which I really need even to finish the lathe restoration I'm working on. And the price that he wanted for it was outstanding. It was only 400 bucks. Um, and he said a guy was coming in the morning from Indianapolis to look at it. And he, he was asking $750 for the lathe and all the tooling I showed you out of the blue bucket here and the stand. And I ended up getting the whole package, the, uh, the lathe, the stand, all the tooling in the blue bucket, and the milling machine for a grand. And there's some stuff here that needs some work. It's not perfect. Uh, there's one broken part on the lathe that's about $150. So it's not, it's not all roses, but... I thought it was a really good deal and really helpful for me in, in my stage in building my machine shop. Um, the milling machine's rougher than the lathe, but at least it's a milling machine and I can, I can uh, bore out holes and things. And this will let me finish, uh, finish the lathe restoration that I'm doing now. There's a lot of tooling here. You know, one way to build up your uh, tooling, I mean this stuff is incredibly expensive if you have to buy it new. But you can work and earn all this stuff. You can find people who are selling out. For whatever reason, they're selling all their stuff. You go buy it all. You buy everything, even the things you don't need. And you can trade or sell the things that you don't need or that are duplicates in your tools. And, you know, usually you'll do so well at that that you'll end up, you know, increasing the amount of tools that you have and not having a lot of cost or even any cost in it. Um, so that's basically what I'm doing here. A lot of these gadgets that I took out of the blue bucket are things that I don't have any of that I intend to keep. Um, now I've got to do something uh, to, to raise some money to cover what I took out of the family budget here. I'm probably going to sell the Logan lathe. I got a few parts uh, I'm working with somebody to get for that because I want to make it correct. Um, and then that'll get me a lot of the money back that I spent on all of this and I'll have an operational lathe. And I hate to sell the Logan because it's really cool, but I've only got a two-car garage, I've only got so much room for tools and I have to pick and choose. And the, you know, one of the problems I'm going to have is not looking at Craigslist because I really don't have any room to buy anything else. And if I keep looking at Craigslist, I'm going to find something else that's just too good of a deal that I can't, I can't pass it up. And that could cause a problem for me. So I need to, uh, I'm probably going to sell the Logan um, just to make room for in case I run into a screaming, screaming deal that I can't pass up. Um, and I think that's where, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm thinking about this now. And uh, when I get the uh, milling machine picked up today, we'll do a little video on that.